In this video, we cover how to derive the dynamic states for a DC-DC converter. While there are various DC-DC converter topologies, we will focus on developing feedback control for the output voltage of a buck converter. To fully grasp the concepts covered here, you should have some background in buck converter operation and control systems. Here's a diagram for a standard feedback control system. We want to apply this framework to our buck converter system. Our first step is to model our plant as a single input, single output system. For most DC-DC converters, we model the plant in three steps. First, model the dynamic states of the system. Second, simplify and linearize the system around the equilibrium point. Third, obtain the transfer function for the linearized system. In this video, we will just model the dynamic state of our buck converter. To model any system, we first have to understand how it works. Here is a circuit diagram for the buck converter. The buck converter is controlled by the active switch S1. When the switch is on, the current flow is as shown here, where power from the input stores energy into the inductor and output capacitor. When the switch is off, the current flow is as shown here, where the stored energy in the inductor and capacitor begin to discharge and the diode turns on to allow for proper current flow. Although we are switching between two different circuit states, from a control perspective, we care about the average behavior of the converter. The controllable input for our system is the duty ratio of the active switch, which is the on time divided by the total period as shown in this equation. This is an average value, so we need our model of our system to be in terms of average behavior. But how do we go from this switching circuit to this plant system? When, modeling, when in modeling doubt, we always start with the dynamic states. Dynamic states are just components that are governed by an equation that has a derivative. If we look at the schematic for the buck converter, the two components governed by different differential equations are the inductor and the capacitor. Here we've written the equations for the inductor and the capacitor. First we look at what is the voltage over the inductor during the switch is on. This voltage when the switch is on during D is Vn minus Vc. When the switch is off, which is 1 minus D, the voltage is negative Vc. So this is our basic equation and we can try to simplify it. So let's first just write the terms for Vi. We get 1 over L, Vi, and that's multiplied by D. So get that here. And now let's put all the terms together for Vc here. We get 1 over L, we have a negative Vc, and we'll get 1 minus D plus D, which leaves us with just 1. So let's write this in our final form. 1 over L, we'll write Vi times D minus 1 over L here. And actually, we'll make this a Vc. And these are our terms. So this is our equation for our inductor. Now let's look at the capacitor voltage. Here again, we look at the current through the capacitor during each state. So when the switch is on, we get this. And when the switch is off, we get this value. We notice that these are exactly the same. So we can simply just take these terms, add them together. 1 over C, we'll get 1 IL minus VC over R here. And then we would get 1 minus D plus D. These cancel out. And so we're left with a nice, simple equation 
here. I'm just going to write it out so it's a little bit clearer. Vc over Rc here. So here we have our two dynamic equations for the buck converter. From the derivation, we now have equations for the average dynamics of the two states in our buck converter, the inductor current and the capacitor voltage. These same steps can be applied to any DC-DC converter to find their dynamic state equations. The next step is to use these state equations and linearize them.